so Jacob and I, you know, before we jump into a little bit of our introduction, uh, Jacob and I first came together to run these sessions, you know, with our background in marketing. We originally started doing them in Clubhouse. We did a 12 session over six weeks, a couple of months back, and we had tons of interest of agents reaching out to us, thanking us for doing it. One, but how informative it was, it was a one hour audio session for those of you that know about Clubhouse. There was a lot of limitation that came with that because it wasn't acceptable, accept, acceptable, accessible to everyone. And because it was an audio and only people with iPhone had access to it. So we wanted, Jacob and I wanted to take this to another level, not only make it accessible for everyone, but also give it that visual uh, ability for you guys to look in the process and read and take in the information, not just audio. So this is going to be a really good session and I'm really excited to share with all, with all of you some really good strategies that you can put to use, whether you're a new real estate agent or someone who's been in the field for a little bit while. Um, so I'm gonna start off with a little bit of an introduction of who I am to give you a bit of context. My name is Tarmila Rajasingham. I am a real estate agent as well with EXP Realty. My husband and I, who you might have, he's my, my partner. He's also a real estate agent. You, if you're following me on social media or YouTube, you'll notice um, we're always collaborating together. My husband and I, we actually started out in the industry as investors and we invest in the greater Toronto area. And in the process, we realized that we were missing out on a lot of opportunities to close on deals with investors for our own JV partnership, but also have access to information on the back end. So we got our license not that long ago at the beginning of October. And I am, I worked, I'm a marketing consultant. I worked in the field for over nine plus years, primarily in government and not-for-profit sector. And more recently, I co-founded a marketing agency. My business partner is Jacob. We co-founded a, a marketing agency called the Marketing and Mindset, which you might've seen on our social media platforms where we talk about it. And we'll get in a little bit about it and share some more information about you, but we have tons of services we provide under this umbrella. And we'll, you know, my whole thought process was I'll be doing a disservice to people in my group, as well as agents that we were in touch with that if we weren't sharing some of our own experiences to help grow your real estate business. And I'm top 3% here at EXP Realty for revenue share organization. So I am in the process of building my own team and really helping agents grow in the process and to, to redefine the way real estate agents work with each other. Now I wanna hand the mic off to Jacob to give a little introduction about him. Thank you. My name is Jacob Sharman. I'm a realtor here in Houston, Texas, also with EXP Realty. Um, I've, my background is uh, about 14 years in digital marketing, and I've owned my own company for 10 years and recently uh, partnering with Armilla to really help real estate agents grow uh, their business and their brand. Um, so super excited about that. I'm also bilingual, so I do speak uh, Spanish for any of you here or anybody uh, that's watching. If you prefer some training in Spanish, I am here. I'm here to help with that. So like I said, I've been a business owner for over 10 years. Uh, co-founder of marketing and mindset and i'm super excited to to be here beautiful i am let's before we dive into some of the topic for today sorry guys you're going to hear a lot of my children <laughs> they woke up from their nap so they're a bit cranky and i can hear them in the living room but apologies so today we're going to be diving into lead generation everyone's favorite topic. And this is one of those things that most agents often, when you're a new real estate agent, your biggest fear is how am I gonna do transactions? You know, who do I partner with? Where's my mentor? Where's my broker? What's the brokerage I should join? So that's why we started this getting started series off with, you know, ensuring that you, you know, prior to, your, to you getting your license in your first week as a realtor, what are some things you need to put in place so that you're starting off at the right foot? A lot of agents often just get in and they think that their brokerage is going to be their employer and what's going to handhold them and launch their business business the way that they think that it should be running. And that's kind of not the case. So now we're at a point where now you joined a brokerage, you joined a place where there has tons of availabilities and tools. Now what's the next step? And it's about you getting an online presence, starting getting the right channels for social media, putting your uh, presence online, do your digital print footprint started. And now that you 
have all of that set up, what's next? And now it's all about getting the leads, now working with clients and nurturing and converting them. And that's where we are here today. And today we're gonna to talk about a number of uh, different topics, everything from traditional marketing strategies to how to dip into your own people that you know, sphere of influence. And we're gonna talk a little bit about paid advertising and what's out there. And then we're gonna dive into how you can leverage some tools like a CRM and how that could be the really the nucleus to your business. And then we'll end it off with social media marketing. And the interesting thing about some of these agenda items you'll notice is that a lot of them are free ways for you to generate leads. They're not, there are a lot of them could be offline and they're free and they're not all paid. So that's something that I wanted to really emphasize as real estate agents is that we come into this industry not having access to a lot of income and not a large budget. So how do you do lead generation without having to spend a lot of money? And that's what we're here to talk about today. So let's get started. Our first topic is we're gonna dive into traditional strategies and Jacob is gonna take that for us. All right, so let's get started with that. So in, like she said, in, in a lot of these that we're gonna talk about in each one of these categories, each category has some free um, uh, lead generation ideas. And then there's some that also obviously uh, cost money and, and it's, some of them aren't even that much of a cost. So let's go ahead and talk about traditional strategies. Traditional strategies, you know, a lot of um, agents today will call them kind of old school methods. Um, there's, they still work and you can still uh, modernize them um, into this age. I know um, with some of these uh, methods we're going to talk about, depending where you're at in the world, um, you know, Canada versus US and even here in Texas, there's all kinds of different regulations when it comes to the pandemic we just had. And so as things are opening up, more of these things will be available. So just uh, just pay attention to what your regulations are in that, that area. Uh, but some of those tr traditional strategies would include door knocking. So um, whether you want to call it farming or canvassing, you can literally go pick a neighborhood or a specific location in your area um, that you want to target and start knocking on doors. And the whole point of this strategy is not to try to convince them to sell their house or convince them to buy a house or to get up in their personal business. It, the whole point is just to start introducing yourself in front of people and letting people know that you're a realtor in the area, uh, what your services are, how you're different than other people in the area. So a traditional conversation on door knocking would be, you know, hey, your neighbor down the road sold their house for 450000 prices are up. Have you ever considered selling your home? And then based on their answers, that's where you go from. So if they say no, hey, well, um, if you were to do a real estate transaction, do you have a realtor in mind that you would work with? And um, depending on their answer there, and then you would leave your information with them. Uh, I recommend trying to get an email address so you can add that to your CRM. And that way you can just tell them that you want to stay in communication. You're not going to spam them. And you can just send them regular updates of the area, you know, new places that are opening, in the market reports and, and, and such. And if you're too scared to knock on doors, maybe you're not comfortable. I know Thermilla and Josh do this. You can go hang up door hangers. So you can get uh, print some door hangers really, really cost effective. And you can just walk and uh, put them on the door. You're too busy. Maybe find a high school or college kid that'll go do them for you. So there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. So uh, door hangers is definitely another method. And uh, usually the most dreaded method would be cold calling, people uh, picking up the phone and calling. So uh, depending where you're at in those regulations, because I know even where Tharmil is at versus us, there's different regulations on who you can call based on um, laws about, you know, um, uh, telemarketing and things like that. So the, the objection, the, the objection, the objective behind cold calling um, at least here stateside would be you could call for sale by owners, uh, uh, lease by owners. You could do um, expired listings and you can even do cold calling in a geolocation trying to uh, see if people considered selling their homes um, for the for sale by owners, you know, they don't want to use a real estate agent so uh, the process would be to ask them kind of why and to see if they would ever consider it. And um, same thing with the expires, why didn't their house sell? So it's just all about starting a conversation with them. It's not trying to convince them to, to sell, sell, sell. It's just about maybe scheduling a listing appointment, getting their email address to keep in contact with them, and then uh, go from there. And there's tons of videos out there on how to make those cold calls. So watch on them because 
Um, you're just basically trying to have a, a casual conversation and talk to them like you would your best friend, your mom, your family members. That way they kind of let their guard down. So next would be direct mailers. So this is, um, Gray, this can be a little costly depending on how many you send out. Because at least here, like when I looked it up, you're still paying about 80 cents a mailer because you got to pay for the stamps and things like that to be mailed out. But you can do direct mailers to let people in a geolocation know, hey, I'm a realtor, here's what I do. So some ideas for that direct mailer would may, maybe to be if you had a listing, maybe put uh, the recent listing you had, how much it got sold over for asking, possibly since that's pretty much what every listing is happening. Uh, right now is going over asking and then put like how fast you were able to sell it and what you did that other agents don't do that no matter the price of the home you're taking quality photos and videos you know you're treating every customer the same with quality um, and put those things on there and mail those out and let them know that you're in the area and you're providing those services um, networking events would be another one as things are opening up again um, some ideas of networking events would be maybe you'll see a lot of, at least in the Houston area, there's a lot of networking events for investors. People are looking to get into investing. So you could literally go to those events, start talking to people. Maybe it's their first time investing and maybe they need a real estate agent to guide them through the process and make sure that they get something that if, maybe if they're looking for a rental, that it could actually get them the income they need for what they would pay for if they're taking out um, some type of loan on the property or maybe they're looking to flip it. So finding them something and working out a deal because you could get the, the sale of it and then the resell of it, you know, so the purchasing and the selling of it. So networking events, um, even events to, to go out and just meet people, uh, meet other agents because other agents can let you know about properties and other things that are going on in the area. So networking events um, and then referrals, get in the habit of asking people for referrals. Um, just because somebody, even in the door knocking, if, if somebody is not interested in selling or they're not even considered selling, maybe they just bought their home. Um, they might know of somebody that is going to sell their home, a parent or, um, you know, a brother, sister, friend. So just get in the habit of asking for referrals and fill that pipeline because referrals and word of mouth is usually the best form of advertising because it's the most warm and the most, um, trustworthy. So get in the habit of that. And that kind of wraps up some of our traditional strategies. And then next, we're going to talk about sphere of influence. And I'm going to hand that back to Tharmila. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob. And for those of you, before I kind of get into some of the ways you can leverage your SOI, I want to talk a little bit about what is the sphere of influence. And in, in real estate, a sphere of influence is SOI, we call it, is a set of people you know. So all the people that you've ever been in touch with, and people often think of family and friends, and that's great. But remember, there's people you've worked with, you might have volunteered with, people at your church, people at your friends, your daughter's friend's birthday. Like there's a tons of times we're in touch with people on a regular basis, maybe your neighbors that are often kind of in your circle that we don't really quite think about. So that's the number one thing is to identify who these people are and where are they at? Are they connected to you online? Are they on your LinkedIn? Are they on your Facebook? Are they on your Instagram? And are you connected to them through online? Are you connected to them in person? Do you have to see them on a weekly basis? Let's say you have to drop off your daughter or son at a dance class and you happen to run into the parents that you that are of the children's parents that you're in touch with on a weekly basis, but you not quite have them on Facebook yet. So I think this is where now, wherever you go and you're in touch with people on a multiple level, the beautiful part about this that I wanted to touch upon and that it's really gonna drive your lead generation to the next level is this is what a lot of lead generation in terms of, you know, you're bringing in the leads and you have to nurture them and you convert them. But in the process often where people lose a lot of their leads is through that nurturing process because they don't quite make it to conversion and closing the deal, right? So, and the reason why that is, is that is the three factor, know, like, and trust factor. Often people, you know, when you get a cold group of leads, the reason why you put them in your database and you set, send them tons of value to show them that you're the right agent to work with when they're ready to buy or sell, and you're trying to win them that trust, letting them get to know you a little bit and then like you and then potentially trust you in the process because it is a massive transaction. It is a personal transaction when somebody's listing their home or purchasing a home and you want them to choose you. So in this case, a sphere of influence, you kind of um, expediting that process because they already know you. They know your name, they know you, and now you're kind of telling them, hey, I'm a real estate agent. 
and I'm available if you need me. But you don't want to always be doing that kind of openly all the time because then it'll kind of turn people away that, oh, that's all they want from me is to, you know, list my property. So the unique way to leverage your SOI without ever having to openly talk about it is to build awareness around the fact that you're a real estate agent. So now you found out where your network is, whether they're online, offline, and then now you're going to start reaching out to them in a way not so directly. So indirectly, you're going to start posting about the fact that you're a real estate agent. You're going to start sharing some of the properties that you're listing, maybe a little bit of property updates. You can share buyer's guide, seller's guide, maybe a moving checklist, a staging tip neighborhood guide maybe there's a change in neighborhood maybe they're going to be building a new pipeline or they're going to be bringing in a new transit system and you're going to be that knowledge holder and any kind of news in the community you're the one to kind of post about it so people are kind of now not only tuning into your content but remember folks how many times have you had i have what 800 people on my facebook most of the people i never see what they post because my i haven't been interacting with them and the algorithm isn't working in my favor for, for me to see their content. So sometimes even the closest piece of people to me, like my aunt is on my Facebook. Now that I remember, I don't think I've ever interacted with my aunt on Facebook other than when it's our birthday or something like that. So now how do you ensure your content is seen by them? And that's to post constantly. So to have them start engaging with you. So now you're gonna go from awareness to engagement. And the moment they start liking your post, start looking at your post, Facebook, Instagram, all of these, even LinkedIn is gonna help let other people see your post as much as possible. So again, a free endeavor that you now venture that you started doing that people are gonna now notice that, hey, for example, one of my really close friends that I that I used to be close friends with her 20, uh, 12 years ago in my part-time job, my one of my first ever part-time jobs, I helped her buy her first property two months ago. And I did that because I started posting about the fact that I'm a real estate agent on my personal Instagram. So I think that you, now letting people know because people often are looking for someone they already know in order for them to often people reach into their database right like hey do, who do i know who's a real estate agent and then they kind of branch out looking for someone that they can help with so you want to be the person with that knowledge holder so that so that they choose you one of the big things that i i wanted to talk about here is that often you think that you need to give them value from a real estate perspective and not really the case so remember it's all about relationship so think about it. Are you wishing them happy birthday? I know it's sometimes it gets super annoying when you keep seeing Facebook, um, you know, notification of birthdays coming up. And you know, we used to be on a on a on a on a spree of giving everyone birthday wishes, but then we kind of stopped doing that, right? So get back into it. And uh, something really beautiful about birthday wishes that you can automate them. So figure out if you have a CRM at your brokerage that you can leverage to automate birthday wishes. And also you can send people video clips of birthday wishes so that you stand out a little bit more and people more likely to share them, send them in a story, in a way, in a method that they haven't seen before. And again, this isn't about you just sell, you know, indirectly, you're indirectly telling them that you're here and that the more they interact with you in every other level, again, Facebook and other platforms are ensure that your content come first and top of mind for them. And remember, again, when you talk about building a relationship, there's some really interesting way for you to find out where in their journey these your sphere of influences are. Like, are, is somebody in your sphere growing a family? Are they looking into retiring? Are they, have somebody gotten a big promotion? Often these kind of massive events in people's life trigger them to move into a, a potentially property, move to a different place, sell their property, buy another property. So think about how am I going to find out these are key significant moments in people's lives. And you could do that through an interesting, like a Facebook, like, you know, social media polls on stories of gathering information without really directly asking people and then also being on your social media looking and liking people's pictures people do gender reveals and birthday uh, you know birth announcements and things like that and so starting to comment on people's um you know in in their post and start interacting with them so that you again letting facebook know and the algorithm know to work in your favor and often we think that you know we always have to share our wins you know oh i don't have any listing to share or i don't have any i didn't close on a deal so i don't know but remember if you're putting in an offer even if it doesn't get accepted 
in people often, this is why it's so important to share both your wins and losses, because at the end of the day, your losses, you learn from them, but you're also doing the work, right? You putting in an offer to me is a win-win, even if you didn't get accepted. So always spin really a lot of the stories in a perspective that is optimistic and positive rather than, you know, oh, it didn't work. So I'm not going to share it, but rather no, you know, it's, I always go, Jacob and I always talk about this, you know, there's always two ways to look at everything, either you win or you learn, you know, so it's really all perspective. And if you're that someone who's leading life with optimism, I think people are going to gravitate towards you. And in order to let people know that it's by literally letting people know that sharing quotes, sharing pictures of your family and friends, things that you're doing to enjoy your life, because often people want to be around other people who are happy. So, you know, getting to a level, you're sharing people's story, being a bit vulnerable, but that doesn't mean that you have to, you'll notice on my social media, in terms of my public social media, I don't share pictures of my children, like their faces showing. Often I try to get clips of them on the side or on the back of them, but I still letting people know, hey, I'm a mom and I relate to people on that level. I have a lot of agents that reach out to me and talk to me about the fact that I have another full-time job and that, I, that I'm, a, I'm a mom of young two little babies and people want to connect to me on that level. So I think people naturally want to be around people that are, again, like-minded, that are very similar to them, that are driven, that are happy. So make sure that you're taking the time to share that with people. And often it's so much easier to start with people you already know. And so I think that's where one of the things that we often miss the mark is we often think, oh gosh, we have to put out a buyer's guide or real estate related content, but what about holidays, right? Like telling, uh, wishing people, you know, Merry Christmas, Thanksgiving, even putting out like a gratitude list, thinking about it in ways that people don't quite think about really and the other thing that I really want to talk about is too is that you know it may sound like this is a lot of a lot of energy right like how do I so how often do I spend on Facebook where um, you know what's the best method how often and how long should I be doing this for and I think that's this is really where I come back to you and your capacity to understand your own schedule and time blocking within your schedule to do a sphere of influence lead generation strategy like what I'm sharing with you. And again, this is something that Jacob and I really dive into because what we're sharing with you right now is a lot of high level content, but things that you can kind of pick and run with. And you'll notice this theme across our presentation is, you know, there's tons of different strategies we're sharing with you, but this is why you need to pick one or two strategies and really the key to anything and any, any people that really su succeeded in their efforts are staying consistent. This is the only way you know if your efforts are working, you're able to measure them so that you're not dipping and dabbling. Like if you started doing this for a couple of days and now Facebook is about to help you rank you and same with YouTube videos, right? People put out a couple of YouTube videos and then they stop doing that because, oh, I had 20 views. I'm not going to. But no, because of your next one that you might have put could have put you in a way that the algorithm could have worked in your favor, bringing your organic search views. So think about it from that perspective of thinking beyond your efforts of today and thinking more of a long term strategy. And this is one thing that I really wanted to talk to you about is that. Once you started getting these engagement, make sure to transfer these people into a database so that you can send them information to nurture them. Remember, folks, as real estate agents, often people miss the mark of that, that lead generation journey is that people come in as leads. Remember, leads are anybody, right? Jane Doe off the street that don't know you. Make sure you have to have a reply from them saying that they're interested so they become an active lead. And then you start working with them. They become a client when you start showing properties potentially even a listing appointment, and then you put them on a contract and then you close the deal. So there's a process to you working with clients and often, the most often people miss the mark and they don't quite close on deals is because of that nurturing aspect because they don't quite stay consistent with it. And before we move on to the next strategies, some of the things that I want you to consider, don't assume that they don't know you or they haven't seen your content. Um, and again, don't assume that they already know that you're a realtor. And don't assume that people in your sphere, they already have a realtor. Oh, their cousin is a realtor. You'll be very surprised. Somebody might rather work with you, uh, you know, as someone who is not even too connected. I had a friend who, re her sister is a real estate agent. She still wanted me to help her look for property. So you'll be very surprised what people's circumstances and relationship are with their own group of people in their lives. So, so don't assume that they don't want to hear about your business. 
and you know, and that they don't take interest in your lives. And, and I want you to remember not to assume that the members in your sphere won't refer you because often people think that, oh, they'll refer the people that they already know, but that's an assumption you're making about your business, not really the real case. And try not to, people get so excited about, about this strategy sphere of influence and start DMing everyone saying, hey, I'm a real estate agent. So try not to flood people's inboxes, right? There's really unique and creative ways that I just shared with you that you can get to people's algorithm and to work in your favor for them to see your content without having to DM them. And then always folks, and I am one of the biggest person in this, as you guys know, for some of you that I see you guys in the call uh, who are in my group that I, uh, agents that I work with literally on a daily basis, you know that I, I'm someone I always lead with value. You know, I'm always someone who I'm not afraid to share you, share with you some of the ways that things should be working in strategy. So I highly suggest you, uh, uh, the moment you start putting your content out there and leading with value, the first thing they're going to say is, wow, this person knows their stuff. They're an expert in this. And my goodness, if they already putting out this kind of content, imagine what they would do for my business. They must be so thorough. I want to work with them. So, and that's the type of brand you know, association that you want to be building and you want to be putting out there. But this is a really good segue to start going off to our next topic, which is paid advertising. So now you've leveraged a lot of these, you know, free and organic and often online strategies. Now, how do you tap into some of the things that, that are going to be wide reaching, but that are online and offline? And I'm going to hand it over to Jacob. All right. Thank you for that. And yeah, so we're going to talk about more online and off lead generation strategies with paid advertising. So obviously these aren't your free methods, but these also can be very cost effective as well. So let's talk about more of your traditional forms of offline advertising. Um, so a lot of things that come to mind when I think of the traditional is radio stations. You know, you hear a lot of radio ads. A lot of people still listen to the radio, even though I listen to Spotify all the time, but people do still listen to radio. And, and a lot of those are people that are going to buy a house. And um, I heard a strategy from another person on our team that actually are promoting through uh, more like ethnic, cultural type radio stations. So whether it's like Spanish radio station, Hindi, things like that, because it is a smaller station. So it'd be more cost effective versus a super popular radio station in your area where millions of people listen to it versus thousands of people. So even though it's a smaller audience, but it's a more uh, smaller targeted audience for you. And then you have your traditional people advertise lunches, signage, um, maybe sponsor a community event, you know, a baseball team, a soccer team, or a high school play. They always are looking for a sponsor, a high school yearbooks. Um, I remember we used to ads for those with local businesses. So um, there's all kinds of traditional forms of advertising with ads, uh, like I said, and sponsoring um, that you can do. And then there's the more modern uh, digital thing that everybody wants to get into. And we're going to talk a little bit about some pros and cons with those. Um, and some common misconceptions, but next would be Facebook and Instagram ads. So everybody's wanting to, to get that lead generation kind of on autopilot, have leads coming from some ads that you're running, whether you're spending $5 a day or maybe $50 a day. Um, but there are some things where these will not work for you if you don't do them correctly. So obviously you're gonna have to have an engaging ad, uh, but one thing people do is they think when they get a Facebook ad that they don't really like it's an automatic lead, it's an automatic sale or automatic buyer that's serious. You know, a lot of times they're looking for somebody to they're in the process of searching for a house and they find something that they want to get information on. So you want to make sure that when that Facebook ad or that Instagram ad, one, it gets into your CRM or your database, whether whatever you're using, whether you've seen a spreadsheet, using something like Zapier to get those to import automatically. And you're going to need to respond right away. So whether you have like an automatic drip campaign where you have several touch points, whether it sends them out an instant text message saying, hey, are you, you know, I, we saw that you're browsing on our website. Are you looking to buy um, uh, soon? Or are you just browsing? Something to start that touch point to where they have now they have your contact information. And um, or the best method is just to pick up the phone and call them if they put their phone number in there and reach out to them and find out how you can help them and what you can do for them. Uh, the worst thing you could do with a Facebook ad, in my opinion, is just build up this huge list 
in your CRM and think that an email like once a day or once a week, it's going to convert them because it's not. It's going to warm them up slightly. But at the end of the day, real estate, you have to have a conversation. You have to get to talking to people. And that is the scary part. But there's tons of videos out there, tons of YouTube videos. If you have any questions, just reach out to me or Tharmilla and we'll walk you through the process. But don't waste hundreds of dollars on Facebook and Instagram ads. That are not going to have a conversation. Okay. Um, so make sure that you have a clear strategy as well. And then the, the number one thing that we see is a lot of people don't have them immediately going to something. If maybe you don't have a CRM where you're at, um, um, with the brokerage you're with, they don't provide one. We use KV core and I use a Zapier to, to send it right. And then it automatically starts them in a campaign where they get a text message and then an email and all, all these things. So if you don't have that, even getting it imported directly into a spreadsheet and that notifies you that way you see all the information. Cause if not, then you got to export out of Facebook and it's just, it's a process. And then you don't know if you have one, you have to constantly go check. Make sure that you have a strategy set up to be able to nurture these leads as they come in and hold a conversation and let them know, hey, how can I help? So another form of ad you could run would be a Google ad. So, you know, at the top of your, the search engine result page, you're going to see those little ads at the top and they're going to say the little word ad. Um, you know, those are ads that you can run and pay for uh, per click. So um, some, some good things that you could add, run with Google ads would be even a filtered search result. So like with, uh, again, with uh, the CRM that I use with KV Core, I can go into my IDX website. I can say, I wanna find houses in Sugarland for under 350,000 and it'll generate a link that no matter who clicks that link, it's gonna give them that funneled search result. So I can run an ad, check out these amazing homes in Sugarland for under 350,000. Um, click here to get access. And you can do the same thing with your Facebook ad um, where you can put a URL. So those are types of Google ads you can run or maybe, hey, uh, create a landing page where they can get a free uh, quick CMA. Um, you can create a landing page for sellers. They put in their address. Obviously that's what we can do with us. And there, I know there's other tools out there that will create that for you, but they can put their address in and it'll do a quick CMA uh, to let them know approximately the value range of their house. And then again, you got their cell phone number and their email because they got to be able to deliver it to something. And then you can start getting seller leads that way as well. Um, you can do YouTube ads, YouTube video ad. Don't recommend you boosting any of your YouTube videos that are on your channel. Um, if you want to run a separate ad, um, letting you know whether you're targeting sellers, buyers, or first time home buyers, or um, just to let people know of your service, you can run YouTube ads. They do usually have a higher conversion rate because with YouTube, you can actually filter down your target audience even more uh, with all the data that they have. And then there's other third party stuff as well. So like Property Boost, um, and there's other third party um, tools that will promote your listing for you. Um, so if you have a property that you're looking to promote, or maybe somebody at your brokerage will let you promote uh, maybe they have a listing and they're going to let you promote it so you can find a buyer for their listing. You know, don't be afraid to ask other agents, especially maybe in your brokerage or in your area that maybe you've gotten to know, hey, I'm a new agent and I'm trying to get my first buyer. I'm trying to get my sales up. Is there any way that I can maybe share your listing and promote it and try to find a buyer for you? And most of them are going to agree with that. You just want to get permission and get it in writing, but there's no shame in paying to uh, do property boost. And depending on your CRM, a lot of those tools are integrated. That's one thing I like about ours. And I know we'll talk about CRMs later is that those tools are there to kind of put that on autopilot for you. So there's so many resources out there when it comes to paid advertising. Just my encouragement to you is no matter whether you pay to do cold calling or door knocking or these paid advertisings, have a specific strategy, have a specific time frame because there's no secret sauce to all this. It all works. It's all going to get you some type of leads, but at the end of the day, you have to be consistent and you have to know who you're targeting and you've got to have some quality content to put out there and just stick with it. And the biggest advice too, is that let's say you're going to do this for 90 days. Every week, take a look at how was my delivery, whether it's cold calling or calling somebody or your the way you follow up with lead, like how was delivery or how what was my conversion this week? And fine tune it and get better at that craft. Don't change it and go, oh, I did Facebook for two weeks. I only got two leads. That's nothing. 
Maybe it's your ad, maybe it's your graphic. You can do it like an A-B testing on some of these to see which one has a better response rate. So there's so many things you can do to tweak that one little thing that you're doing. That's how you get better and that's how you get better results. But don't go into, especially paid advertising, thinking that, oh, the first week I'm gonna get a thousand leads or a hundred leads. It's not gonna happen, okay? My, my first two weeks doing a Facebook ad, I targeted because I was a new agent. A lot of people ask this like, well, as a new agent, what do I put out for an ad? Everybody's putting their listings and what they can do for people or how they were able to sell this house for a buyer. I literally took my CRM, did a filtered search for home or open houses in Sugarland. And I said, check out all these open houses in Sugarland, Texas this weekend. And boom, I had about 60 leads that came in over a two week period and about six to eight of them I'm trying to remember exactly because it's been a minute, but about six to eight of them I were actually communicating with and working with and helping them trying to find a house. So there's there's that you can put check out homes in this um, in Sugarland for under three hundred fifty thousand. So find a good price point for your area that people that's that sweet spot people are trying to buy in, and put that everywhere. Check out this. Check out this, and just have a filtered search so they immediately get access to the data. And then depending on how your CRM or if you do a landing page where they have to put their information in to generate that lead or your CRM automatically captures that for you, just make sure that you're actually getting that information for that lead so you can actually follow up with them and uh, it's not a lost lead that you paid for. So that kind of gets us into the segue of talking about the smart CRM. This is something that is Thermula and I's favorite topic because it is really not utilized um, to its fullest potential. And we're actually shocked and talking with other agents that a lot of them either have like a really crappy CRM or they just don't have one at all. So that's something that we both looked for because we've both been in marketing with our brokerage. And when I tell you this girl is like the queen of KV Core, she is like, that's how I, uh, one of the reasons I reached out to her when I was choosing my brokerage, because I saw that she was good at that. And I knew I had to align myself with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to her to talk about um, smart CRMs. Thank you, Jacob. And I feel like this is one of those topics that a lot of people aren't leveraging one. It is a very smart way to do work. And and often people think, oh, I have a CRM, so I'm I'm good, you know, I, I'm gonna start working in it. But I wanna really take my moment to really explain to you what a smart CRM is, how are ways you can leverage to bring in leads. But above all, I'm someone who, my time is everything. Right now, I recently left my full-time job and I pretty much had to buy time. So you could imagine that's one of the most expensive currencies, right? And often we we get so stuck thinking about lead gen as a form of one time, we need to bring people in and we'll close a deal rather than thinking of a long-term strategy. So to me, I wanted something that was working for me that was doing all in one. Not only is my KV Core a part of my branding, it is a part of how I lead generate, it is a part of how I work with my clients on a day to day basis, and is doing a lot of things for me. So this is a, a robust technology. We at our brokerage have access to something called a KV Core platform, but there are a lot of other CRMs out there, guys, and I'm sure a lot of you are in here from different, different brokerages. So if you already don't have access to a CRM or you know about the fact that your brokerage has a CRM, the first thing that I would do right after this phone call is call your broker and ask them about your CRM. And because I feel like you're paying for something that you first essentially aren't using properly and you shouldn't be on this call because you would be really working with clients if, if, you, if your CRM is really working for you, right? So I think this is where often people have a big misconception. So KV Core is a third party platform. It's $8,000 to $10,000 if you wanna go buy it on your own. And that's why a lot of brokerages often buy that and then provide that as a service to, to the agents. And here are some of the things you can use in a way for you to automate, but also lead generate. They have ability for you to create your own landing pages, multiple landing pages, as many as you want. And I have landing page for my buyer's guides, my seller's guide, my investor guide. My husband and I are investors. So that's something that I do with my team is to help people you know, how is a different language when you're working with investors. So you need to know cash flow analysis and um, see like searching properties is a different language. So 
you create a landing page that is fitting for that audience. Let's say you're looking for sellers and listing. So then you can create a landing page and then you can run ads, but you can share that link across your network, including your SOI, which we just talked about momentarily. And the next one is where Jacob touched upon this a little bit, which is the IDX squeeze page. So what this is, you go into your uh, into the KV Core, which is again, your website. So remember, KV Core is a, is a um, leading edge technology. It's a robust technology that has your website, your personal website, which is IDX MLS system integrated website, including the ability for you to generate lead through email marketing, through paid advertising, through uh, smart campaigns that are your text messages, emails, voicemail drop, even an integration of things like um, above and beyond that Google ads, you can integrate a voicemail, like a, uh, a cold calling dialer, like Mojo dialer, you can integrate it, even other email marketing tools that you can you can add to, but you can also email without having to purchase a above and beyond that an email software. So this idea squeeze page is very similar to what Jacob talked about, where you go into your website, you put in a search, let's say single family homes under $800,000, for me, I'm in Toronto, our average single family home with three bedroom is going for 1.2 million. So for, for you guys in your market, figure out what that average, again, you wanna always hit people with the, the amount that they're able to afford. So the strategy to doing all, there's always a strategy, right? To you first searching for that right group of people to attract, the more the expensive a property is, less your, your audience decreases. So you always wanna find a minimum price range and an area that is wide encompassing because you rather shoot out and then you kind of funnel people into your funnel that's why that marketing funnel is so important is that you first put out a lot of information that build that awareness because they don't quite know you yet and then you move them through the middle funnel getting to know them sending them nurturing them and then you move them down the, the bottom funnel again and then you're you're converting them so this idx squeeze page is when you go into your website you put in a search alert like let's say again eight hundred thousand dollar three bedroom single family home in let's say one of the areas in toronto is called scarborough so you would put scarborough and it'll give you a link with all the properties of new listing that hit the website today so again it's created with mls so that hit the mls system you would take that link and now it's a it's a it's a link that is connected to your website so if anybody tries to click on this website, you can automate this to say, if they click on it three times, then you would bring them into your KV core, or maybe you wanna give them five clicks so that they're on their third photo and it doesn't let them go any further. So, and it shows you as the listing agent, which is the most beautiful part about our website is that you could be on any of the listings, any of these listings that they click on, it doesn't show the listing agent who listed the property, but it shows you. So you kind of, again, you can run ads on this, you can use it into your sphere, you can email it out to your database that you currently have. So it's really is a unique way for you to lead generate and to bring in people directly into your CRM, right? But the, the interesting part about all of this is that the, the at an overview, the journey. So you're bringing people in, but remember, that's why I have something called that smart campaign integrated and enabled. So I have triggers, a couple of triggers in my KV Core that says, when a new lead comes in, send them this text message, this drip. When a new lead comes in, in three days of them coming in, send them this email if they didn't respond to my text. And then the, a week of them coming in, if they didn't respond to my text or my email, send them this other text message. Remember, guys, when you're texting people, calling people, you don't know what they're doing. You don't know if they have another job. What if they're at a hospital? What if they're with their family? What if somebody, how many times have you seen a friend text you and you looked at the phone? I'm like, I'll reply to them. And you just read and you put it away and you forget to reply to them. So you don't mean to ignore them. And often, how many times do you get phone calls and you happen to be away from the phone and you're cooking? So, and sometimes people, you have to understand your audience, right? Not everybody are email people. And sometimes your email can go to junk. You don't know what kind of email system they have set up. So think about you want to hit people on different method again and again until they reply. And that's why often people say you want to have seven touch points until people are converted into a client. And often we miss the mark here, right? People often lead gen, but they never nurture. So that's why I can't 
stress the importance of having a system like this that's doing the work for you. So automating everything, because you're paying for already, so why do not take advantage of the system? And that's what I, 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 I teach a lot of agencies, how to use KB Core on a, on a way that is kind of a backbone to your business. And another thing that I always do is I try to send at least a minimum one email per week to my database. And it's often I send them, um, once a month, I send them a market report. Again, this is a scheduled mass email that goes out to a particular we call them hashtag in KV Core. So you have a group of people that are buyers, sellers, new leads that came from Facebook ad, whatever. I label them in different, different buckets because that's the most important as you understand your database and who's in your database. And then I send email out to them. So let's say if I put together, uh, obviously, as you guys know, my husband and I are, we, uh, we on a weekly basis, we put our YouTube videos on our YouTube channel. So we send out a YouTube video. We had one that came out today that was on investment strategies in Ontario. And so we, we send that to all of our database. And then so, again, it doesn't just have to be market reports. It can be value on a different level. Someone actually this weekend, I mass texted everyone in my database, letting them know that I have access to these uh, platinum access to this pre-construction property that we just received that launched a couple of days ago. I had two people directly reply to me in a couple of minutes saying, yes, I want early access. Can you send me more info? Perfect. I literally, I forwarded off to one of my other agents um, and said, can you take this on because I'm busy this weekend. So you're able to do this in a moment's time and you'll be surprised how quickly people reply to you. And I had this automated that went out and I also sent them an email because often I know how many people might look at that text message. Remember, text messages, you want to put paragraphs of info. So you said, hey, guys, I have platinum access. You're going to send an email shortly with the information of the locations. And the next is uh, paid advertising. So within our CRM, we have the ability to run Google ads, Facebook ads, and they're being directly inputted into your CRM, which I'm going to show you in a moment what they kind of look like. The most important, the you obviously a lot of the questions often I get when I talk about this is like, how is that different than me running my own Facebook ad? And the massive difference is KB Core and the partnership they have with Facebook, they have the ability, not only are they setting up your Facebook ad, if any of you, I've set up hundreds of Facebook ads in my career. So I know the amount of time it takes to not only do them, first find out if they work, and then the amount of energy that it takes to, like Jacob said, figuring out what works for you, because the time of day matters, right, when you launch your Facebook ad. Um, so, and how granular, because with Facebook ad, when you're doing in a special ads category, which is housing, um, they're restricted 15 miles radius because they don't want you to discriminate because everyone deserves housing, right? So you, 15 miles radius, often it could be such a large area. So how do you leverage how do you granularly target a poster code or a zip code is through paid advertising like KV Course, Facebook ad, like Property Boost. So, but the important thing about this folks is when you're running ads, where you're picking up a phone call and call, calling through your you know, telephone book, like Telelisting, for example, or FISBO, for those of you in the States, you're allowed to call expired and stuff. You have a little bit of a different leeway than we do in Canada. Then you have the ability to not only get to, you're getting to people that are, that are, could be someone who's not even thinking about selling the property or ever even buying a property because they're, and they're cold, right? They're cold leads. Where with these ads, they're actually using uh, your own listing or a listing that you have permission to, to share. And they're thinking about real estate and they keep seeing it. The beautiful part about some of these ads that KB Core set up is 15, 10 to 15 ads are simultaneously running in the background, keep appearing in these people's uh, in, in the people that are living in this poster code, keep appearing in their Facebook until they click on it. And the moment they click on it, there's a very small fine print that says your information and everyone's, everyone has their email address and often phone, uh, phone number, which is again, Facebook owns WhatsApp connected to a, a real Facebook a phone number, not, not anything that people have to fill in where if you run your own lead form ad through Facebook, you people have to actually fill in their uh, their name, last name and phone number. And my goodness, I had pizza pizza number, you know, come through as one of my uh, fake leads because often people put in fake information all the time because they just want access to information. Whereas here, KB course pulling directly pulling their information from Facebook because they're given the moment you touch our ad, you're giving 
permission, give me consent to your information being pulled into our database. And the wonderful part about KB Core that a lot of people don't know is just lead validation. So it automatically, it deletes any phone numbers or emails that, that aren't delivered. So that are fake or that are, uh, that are, that are incorrect, that are connected to a system. So you, your database is full of accurate inf uh, data, uh, um, information, client information, information, which is important. Because that's another thing that people have to do is that, oh, I have tons of leads and they go and purchase, you know, thousands of dollars worth of lead packages and often half of them aren't even real people. So around this idea, I want to talk about is a smart CRM. CRMs are out there that are amazing, wonderful. Through our, I, this is literally a screenshot of my back end of my CRM. So uh, at EXP, the brokerage that with, we have access to KB Core. So at your brokerage, you will have something like this where on the back end, make sure you're ticking off this box, guys. It's integrated with your website. Remember, it's helping you with your brand presence. It's ultimately, it's coming to your pocket, not to your broker. Every single person in my database is owned by me, not my brokerage, right? So if I leave the company, they're, I'm taking them with me. They're mine, right? I paid for them. I put them in my database. I, you can upload, import those cleats into your database and you can lead generate. So look at the left-hand column here, right? Make sure you can tick this off. Make sure your CRM essentially means customer relationship management. It's a list of all of your contact in one place. Everything you can think about about your client should be in their portfolio, in their own file. So let's say someone named Amanda calls you and you talk to this client, they tell you the type of property they want. You're gonna quickly in their information, you're gonna type in everything that Amanda wants and her family for their property. You're not putting them in pieces of paper or Excel documents. So you have a very smart business that you're running, right? And everything's integrated. And now you know when Amanda calls you a week from now, cause you put a little task in KMV Go telling you to call Amanda two weeks from now or a week from now to follow up. What you're going to do is pull this up on your phone or your desktop, wherever you're calling them from and say, hey, Amanda, yeah, I'm following up with you. I remember you said this. I, I remember you said you want this for a property. I actually found these three properties. What do you think of these? And the other thing that people don't think about is because your CRM is integrated. Look, right now it's on the listing. It's integrated with your MLS system. The beautiful part is you can literally set up search alerts for everyone in your database. And this is what I tell all my agents is that Literally put a search alert on everyone, even if it's the random, put a condo, $500,000 condo, whatever you want to think about, put it on everyone. And people, the beautiful part is when they reply back to you and say, I think you have the wrong search alert. Actually, I'm looking for this. There you go. Right. And, and now you got a, a lead responding to you, telling you exactly what they're looking for. Now you're going to pick a phone call and continue that conversation and hopefully you're able to close that deal. So, and then you can run a number of marketing efforts through here, which I talked about, make sure you're able to track your, again, your ability for you to edit and uh, um, add in plugins to your website and able to analyze everything at an overarching level. If you were to ask me right now, how many people are in your database? How many people have you closed a deal? Everything's in my business analytics captured. So make sure you're always constantly tracking. So for example, this is my our website that looks like we have our own URL. Um, literally, I'm not a dis website designer. Jacob is the website designer. He's a website developer. I am not. I'm a marketing consultant. I hire people like Jacob to do this for me. Well, in this case, I don't have to because I'm a real estate agent with very limited budget. I don't feel like hiring Jacob, who's quite expensive to build a website for me. So what I'm gonna do is join a brokerage like EXP or somewhere, hopefully your brokerage gives you not a profile in their database, or I mean in their brokerage pay website, but they give you your own unique URL that you can lead generate that isn't going to their database, coming to your database that you own. And look at what I did. This is me who have no experience in website can do this in the back end. I changed the background picture. I changed my profile. I added my husband and I's name. And prior to my husband getting his license, my husband also got his license, but I think in March. And so only very recently I added him in. And then we integrated right at the top here our social media accounts, we put a profile in and our and our logo, I did all of that in maybe like 20 minutes, right? Because it gives you a, a video that shows you exactly how to do it. So, and this is all, it's my website, nobody else's website. And the part that gets really interesting here is, I wanted to show you some, but this is literally a screenshot that I took a couple of days ago of my, of my back end of my property booth. So any of my agents who are in my team, you've probably seen this. I opened it up and I showed it to you. I so far have ran seven ads through property booths. Again, only maybe two of them, maybe one of them was my, two of them were my listing. And the others were all 
listings that I got permission again in writing. I sent a quick text message to the listing agent. I got a listing and I promoted it. I got X amount of clicks. Um, and then I got leads from this. And right now they're all sitting in my database. I've worked with about eight clients right now that I'm working with that have come through this. And this is again, KB Core running Facebook ads on a listing that you've given them to that, that post to go to the area that people are looking to move into that are searching for that area. And they're, the warm leads because what are they thinking that they saw your listing they thought about you know having interest in that listing they clicked on it big difference between them looking at your picture or uh your something else that you're sending them to let's say a video where you're talking about something and they they clicked on to look at what you're talking about where rather here they want more information about this property that you just boosted big difference of the type of quality of leads that you can generate from this the next is here's the giving you a, a screenshot of what that IDX squeeze page looks like. I know some of, because often that word can be very, often agents tell me, what does that even mean? And I explain it to them and they're still confused. So this is just a screenshot of my website. I put in a random search alerts to show me, you know, properties in Toronto in all of these types of property in Toronto. I just did this just to show you. And it showed me all the properties that it finds in that category, everything you could think of, literally you see an $80 million, $80 million property, like literally everything. So imagine, let's say you're looking to attract, I don't know, for us, let's say, you know, middle income family that are looking to move into a smaller apartment, uh, a condo, uh, a condo in the Toronto area, then I would put in that search alert send it to people now, all the newcomers that are coming in that just are looking for a small condo that they wanna live in and then upgrade later. Remember, it's all a process, right? Every couple of years, people tend to move. So then you can do a very granular niche search, but it's wide encompassing because of, of, the, of the price that you're going after, the price range. And then now you're able to have people click on this. And again, one, two, three clicks, whatever that you have triggered it'll have them log in and then you'll get a ping on your phone saying that you have a lead and this is all of your efforts. And the, the amazing thing, thing about this is that it's free because you're not paying for it, uh, for any ads to run above and beyond the efforts of even just setting this up. So now it's a, a good segue into just talking about social media marketing and how, and this is where I wanna touch up is all the traditional strategies are amazing, right? But the reason they're called traditional is they're often either offline and they're not measurable and they're often limited to reach because you can never really measure them. Where in this case, you have the ability to measure them and they're wide reaching. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jacob to talk about this. Awesome, thank you. So social media marketing is a super hot topic too because I mean, everybody wants to be on social media. It's one of the most widely used platforms that we have out there. Um, and But there's so many channels to choose from. There's so much content to choose from. And a lot of people don't have a great strategy. They just start posting. And that's definitely not what you want to do. Um, when it comes to social media marketing, you know, to get, a, to get a wide reach across, to be able to benefit from all these algorithms that are out there, we want to make sure that we're posting consistently. So even if you can only post once or twice a week, make sure that you consistently post once or twice a week, and then you're posting quality content. So um, if you're unsure about social media marketing and content and all that, watch our uh, previous um, two um, webinars that we did. We kind of covered in more in depth on how to like plan content and things like that. But you know, think about during the week what you want to uh, plan. So uh, whether you, you know, Motivation Monday or and Tuesday you talk about some of the real estate listings or um, working with buyers and uh, testimonials and local businesses in your neighborhood, maybe a local professional that you network with. So think about consistent content that you can post um, on specific days of the week. And then if you're doing video type of content, the best way to get lots of content um, is to basically do a long form video. So top five reasons why I moved to Houston, Texas. But when you record it, be very specific in point one and then point two, point three, point four, point five. And now you have five short term or short form content to use. So you can create one long form video that maybe you can post on YouTube and you can break it up and segment it. You can post it on Instagram as, um, you know, um, a story. 
um, a reel, um, TikTok, anything like that, but you can break those up. And now from one video, you have six things you can use from those five points. So be very, be very strategic in what you're recording and make sure that you can cut snippets out of it. Even if it's a 15 second or a 30 second or one minute, cut those short form out of there. And that way it takes time um, it puts more time back in your business because the worst thing you want to do is spend two to three hours a day posting to social media because you're not going to get the, the returns that you're thinking of, especially if there's no strategy behind it. And you want to put as much time back into your business to build relationships with your clients and um, do other forms of lead generation as well. So when you're picking your social media and what to use, uh, before we even do anything, we want to make sure that we can measure what we're doing. And a lot of these social media platforms will have insights. You'll be able to see kind of what your reach was, how many people engaged with your post and what was compared to maybe the previous seven days or 30 days or whatever um, you're filtering for your insights, but it will give you uh, um, kind of some, let's say the word again, an insight into how your content performed. How many people are you reaching? So maybe you decided to switch up content and maybe it's performing better or worse. So you can kind of regroup and know what's working. Maybe um, play with certain times of the days. You know, a lot of times um, I notice with Reels, we've talked about this, uh, Thormil and I, is that sometimes between eight to 10 at night, Reels do really well on Instagram. Why? Most people are sitting on the sofa with their family, watching TV, everybody's on their phone and they're actually engaging. So um, definitely play with it. It's all, there's no magic sauce or secret sauce for anything. It's just about seeing what works and then following those insights. They're in there, they're free, uh, but make sure you're measuring what you're doing. So. And when you're choosing your channels, make sure you don't try to just go to every channel at once. You know, that's the worst thing you can do. Like we said, everything that we've talked about, no matter whether it's cold calling or social media marketing, you have to do things consistently and do things right. So um, maybe you're going to start with Facebook or Instagram. Instagram has a really high conversion. Um, it has a higher um, interactive rate. Facebook, last time I checked, um, which has been three or four months, but Facebook had right under a 2% um, interaction rate and Instagram had closer to a 4%. And so a lot of people love scrolling on Instagram. It's more pictures, more videos, and um, it, it's just more, it's easier to, to interact, especially with stories. Stories are a powerful thing. Document everything you're doing. When you're out about, you're getting a coffee, you're meeting with your mortgage guy, you're meeting with a client, you're doing a show, do a quick video. You don't have to do it right in the story app. Thermila and I talk about this all the time. When we go out and about, we would just record everything. We might not use it that day. We might use it next week, but you have content as backup to say, oh, meeting with a client or having a coffee with a, a prospect or uh, meeting with my mortgage guy, trying to get everybody some latest stats on the market. So get in the habit or, hey, had a pizza at this amazing mom and pop pizzeria. So because uh, when you're doing your social media, your social media presence, you're there to sell the lifestyle of the area that you're the expert about everything that's going on. And you're not there just to post a bunch of pictures of houses because anybody can, they can go to Zillow and see all of that. So what you want to show them is why you want to live in this area and why they want you to be their realtor. So Facebook and Instagram, I think are the, probably the best ways to get started if you're wanting to post. Um, LinkedIn is another great thing to use if you use it right, um, because LinkedIn, all those, even though it's more of a business to business platform, all those people need housing, right? All those, and a lot of companies too, they need to relocate employees. They need people that understand relocation and what it involves. And, you know, that's a, a specialty you can get into. So utilizing LinkedIn and networking with those other professionals, connecting with them, like I said, they all need housing and they know people that need housing. And if you're really going to dedicate to one platform and if you feel like you can get in with video, it's YouTube. YouTube really has one of the highest uh, conversion rates as far as um, lead generation because people literally, they don't Google anymore. They YouTube everything. Literally, like if you want to learn how to do something, everybody's how to do it. It's on YouTube. They're searching on YouTube um, to find things. I mean, a lot of you probably found our webinars and all of our stuff that we did on um, 
Clubhouse on YouTube. We immediately did the recaps afterwards and people watched it and tuned into the next one. So YouTube, people are constantly searching how to cold call, how to do sales, how to what to do as a new realtor. So YouTube is super powerful and video is one of the best engagement things that you can do for people because people like to watch video. Nobody likes to read anymore. People like to just have it told to them and to be entertained by that so you can make really engaging content and you can put it on youtube whether it's uh, targeting buyers sellers or helping other agents like we're doing but make sure your content is very specific to your target I, we see a lot of realtors that have no desire in building a team or maybe their brokerage is set up that way and they're constantly putting out things to help other realtors, but yet they're only targeting buyers and sellers. So make sure that your content and your message and your story is very clear that if you're going after first time home buyers or veterans or a specific group of people or a specific target audience, that your content and everything you do follows that uh, demographic as well. And this is a great way to segment because social media is so powerful and everybody's always looking for a course or a tutorial or something to help them really master social media. And one thing I want to do with, too, with social media, remember, you're not a digital marketer, right? You're a realtor at the end of the day. So you need to understand these strategies and how it works, but there's also things in place to, to help you so you're not spending 40 hours a week learning social media. You know, you, at the end of the day, you still have to meet with clients and interact with them. So um, Darmila and I, uh, like we said, we're with EXP Realty and we're um, a group uh, called Agent Wolfpack. And um, uh, the co-founders that we partner with um, are uh, Connor Steinbrook, which is in uh, Dallas uh, Plano area in Texas. And he's known for his investor army. He is like one of the, has one of the largest investment teams as far as real estate goes in the US. And um, his business partner, Mike Sherrard, which many of you, I'm pretty sure you've seen a lot of his, his uh, YouTube videos um, on social media marketing and being a modern agent. Um, he's the top realtor on social media in Alberta, Canada. He's number one. And he's top 30 in the world as far as realtors on social media. And we partner with them. And uh, there's so many um, advantageous things with our group. The best thing is when you join our group at EXP or anybody that partners with us, they're not paying any extra team splits or any percentages to us. This is stuff that we get a part of the group. And it's the one reason Thermil and I aligned ourselves with this group is because of all the training, especially on the social media side and being a modern agent. And with this group, there's uh, weekly mastermind calls, whether it is um, how to build your organization, production training. Um, uh, um, Connor has his investor army training. And the best thing is Mike has his uh, social agent academy. And this thing is packed jam full of 40 plus hours of video. So whether you're trying to tackle Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, we didn't even talk about TikTok earlier. Whether you're trying to master any of those social media outlets and to build a brand and to generate leads, this is the course um, for you. And great thing is about this is we get it for free. Um, anybody that partners with us gets access to, access to that for free. Um, I know it retails right under a thousand. I even had an an agent that just joined our team that actually bought it a few months ago and he loved it. And that's what drew him to our group as well. So it is something that is um, a great uh, course to go through. I went through it and even learned a few things and I've been in digital marketing for almost 14 years. So great resource to have. And that's why we do this is we want to empower other agents to build their brand um, and fill those spots where a lot of brokerages are letting their people down as far as that training goes. So um, it is a great resource to have. Like I said, we don't pay for that. And it's a part of our group. So you've been interested in partnering with us. Definitely reach out to us. And uh, we would love to share that information with you. And I'm going to pass it back to Tharmila. Yeah. And I also wanted to mention, folks, is that our next webinar that we're holding next Monday, it's just around the fact how to get started on YouTube. And that's a lot of the time, that's why you see, notice a lot of EXP agents and a lot of agents in our group are online is because we have access to tools like this uh, that are for free, that we're not paying for. It's just we happen to align with the right people. And this Social Agent Academy, remember, you know, Jacob and I worked in, we're marketing specialists and we're strategists, but at the same time, we 
real estate wasn't the first industry we worked in all these years. So when we came into this industry, this is made specifically for real estate and for real estate agents. So that's why something like this was useful for us to get kickstarted on our business. So we applied our principal strategies that we already knew into helping tools like this. And also we leverage this and we share this with people that are in our group for it to, to kind of grow our team as well, because uh, Mike and Connor has already done all of this work as well. And now what we're doing is with our group, Jacob and I, is if you're following a social, social media, you'll notice that we're looking to grow our own team. And we're always providing, we're all about leading with value and ensuring that our team and our group of people in our group, and remember we're not a traditional team. We don't take any splits no additional cost from uh, from any agents. We are just, a, because at our brokerage, we have the ability to grow our revenue share organization. And you we have the ability to have people be sponsored by us into our organization. So there's a big difference between a mentor, a coach and a sponsor. And you get paired up with a mentor when you come into our organization. So someone in your area who's a top producing agent, you're paired up with and they help you take everything from a from a transaction we not we never look at a single paperwork but that's amazing someone's able to help you on the ground level to ensure that your business is up and running but then how do you get the business how do you get the leads and that's where we come in and we're we're all honestly we're all over the place mike is in calgary like jacob said and connor's in dallas jacob's in houston i'm in toronto and we have agents in france we have agents in india and we're literally coming together and working with people and to share ideas of principal strategies of how to help people buy and sell and to attract leads. Um, I have a, 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 a private Google Drive full of templates, all sorts of templates. And I'm literally every week I'm putting in content in there, everything from buyer's guide, seller's guide, listing presentation, anything you could imagine, Canva templates that of, of door hangers, flyers, market reports that you could take, apply your branding, apply, your um, market info and share with your clients. And I'm a big believer, if you're following me on social media, you'll know that I'm a big believer in having a solid social media strategy and a business planning. I book, you can you have access to my calendar and I sit down with you and we put together a solid business plan. Um, I, recently, I, I recently left my full-time job and I've been in real estate for less than 10 months. Um, and above on top of that, I worked for a very busy workplace. I worked for the government for over nine years and I, um, and I had two little babies in, in the time that I got my license and I was a very busy person and Jacob can imagine Jacob knows all of this because him and I would work together above and beyond this every single day to 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 do this and to work with clients and buyers I've closed. Uh, I have a closing next month so I have about six deals that I've closed above and beyond this in the 10 months you'll notice that agents who been in the for it'll take some six to a year to close their first deal. Um, and I've did this, I was able to do this because not only because I worked in marketing, but I also had access to all of these tools and 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 I had a mentor that that was helping me with my transactional side, right? So ensure that figure out what you need, what we're not all perfect. And that's why, you know, when you need help with something, let's say you need a legal help, you go to a lawyer. If you need help in medical, you go to your doctor. So align your figure out what you need, what you need improvements and align yourself with people that give you the ability. And I'm, I'm, I'm a person who, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm someone who I love the idea of multiple streams of income. Um, after everything that happened in 2020 and 2021 that's happening right now, um, I don't wanna be in a vulnerable situation where I have to depend on one income and that's for me to just sell houses. So that's why it's really important. I have a 20 plus team across, across North America, including Jacob who's in my team who just DM'd me out of nowhere on YouTube uh, to seeing one of my videos and then came into my, and wanted to see my KB core tutorials and wanted to give him some KB Choco tutorial and now he's in my group. Um, and I also hold a private weekly mastermind call every week and I'm always coaching and mentoring agents on how to leverage modern and traditional strategies. My husband and I cold call every week, every day. He's cold calling right now. He's been calling since morning. And in Canada, we'll talk. I know we had a questions that came in about cold calling. So I'll address that in a moment. Um, again, applying different strategies and challenging each other. Jacob and I are also admin of multiple Facebook communities and groups online with 200 plus members where you have the ability to share your content in there, increase your following and your reach. 
to help grow your um, algorithm on Facebook. And something that I started doing this year in Toronto is for, I know there's a couple of you that are here from the greater Toronto area. Uh, my partners and I were holding uh, local, uh, every Friday, we're holding a lunch and learn where we're teaching you about how to leverage your business, but also creating a, a space, a community, so that we can all learn, grow, and, and earn in the process. And this is where you can invite agents who are, are in your sphere of people that you've already been connected with because of any other brokerages. If you were to introduce a brokerage to anybody, you're not getting paid. But our brokerage, if you were to introduce your brokerage to one of your friends who's happy to get their license, you actually get compensated for it. And they become a part of your, your organization. So we have a local, uh, and I know uh, Jacob is in the process of starting one in Houston. Um, and we are looking to maybe start one in California because we have a partner out in, uh, in, in Sacramento. So we're in the process of creating these lunch and learns across North America. And we'd love for you to be part of our group so that we can kind of do them together. And you can also leverage this to grow your own team. And then, of course, above uh, above and beyond that, Jacob and I, of course, through our marketing company, we have tons of things that I want to get into and talk about. But we, are, you have access to my calendar as well, where you can book a time with me, uh, uh, which is a beautiful thing about being a part of our group is that you can have a marketing consultation with me where I audit your brand. I, I give you a little bit of an overview of what isn't working, what could be doing better, what is your messaging like what you need to change, what you need to leverage. And we kind of sit together one-on-one -on -one and kind of um, I do a little bit of an overview. And often agents, you know, instead of six months into your business and you spend X amount of dollars and you're like, oh, what the heck happened? I'm going to stop. And which is why 87% of real estate agents fail within their first five years is because they have no idea what they're doing, which completely understand, right? Not all of us have marketing background. Not all of us are have been business owners. So you have no idea that you're an entrepreneur and you're self-employed when you come into this. Often people think that their brokerage is gonna be their employee and they have all these fears that they assume and make up, right? And so this is where we come in and say, actually, no, the fears and limitations are on you. You need to be able to remove them and partner with people who are able to help you get there because often people are already doing this, right? Um, and the other thing, I'm, I'll pass it on to Jacob to talk a little bit about this. We can't hear you, Jacob. Sorry. I double clicked it. So uh, also to add a part to all of that value is we came together and we created a YouTube channel together. So we wanted to not only uh, share all of our value and our uh, background and all of our marketing training, we also wanted to showcase every uh, member of our group as well. Everybody has a specific um, talent, a specific um, uh, uh, resource that they're able to leverage and we wanted to highlight that so we created the real estate agent collective we're putting out weekly videos of contents for digital marketing these webinars it's right now i think right now, just in a short time we already have over 25 videos so definitely go check that out subscribe make sure you hit that little notification bell so you know when we put out new content as well and then on top of that, Tharmila and I, like we said before, we're co-founders of Marketing and Mindset. We've really, when we did this, we really wanted to be different than any other company that's out there helping real estate agents with their brand and getting in front of them. Sometimes you see when um, any type of product out there, there's a lot of editable templates and kind of make you look like a real estate magazine or Zillow on your Instagram. And we didn't want that. There's a lot more strategy behind, like I keep telling you, you don't sell houses, you sell the lifestyle in your area. And uh, that's what we came up with. We developed a social media calendar for realtors, which we're super excited about um, uh, for $49 a month. So it's like $1.63 a day. We give you access to a monthly calendar. We put out a new calendar every month and you're able to get access to strategies. So not only do you get editable templates with suggested, suggested captions and hashtags, but we're also giving you strategy like when you're out and about how to connect with a local businesses and local organizations and how to get yourself out there and showcase your area and your services and how you're different and what you provide as a real estate agent. So it's a great mix of content to really get your channel looking like a real engaging, authentic um, uh, social media channel. So um, other things 
things that you get with that. We have like this huge content depot of extra posts. So whether it's for holidays, mindset, maybe you have a sold or an upcoming listing or an open house, we have, we have social media posts for that that can all be edited in Canva. And we also have a, another resource uh, called our additional resources where we have every digital and print template you can think of, whether you need signage, business cards, um, any other type of templates, they're there for you at your disposal. And soon we're going to be putting up uh, more stuff about starting YouTube channel and video topics and things like that, equipment, um, and constantly rolling out support for that. So it's definitely something worth checking out. Um, you get a seven-day free trial, so you can at least check it out and see if you like it. And then we're actually going to be rolling a very basic limited free feature uh, this week. Week, and that way you can get access to some basic edible posts so you can see the quality of the content. So definitely encourage you to check that out if you need help. We also offer uh, more one-on-one -on -one services for branding, logo design, graphic design, web design, uh, video editing. So we do have those higher uh, services and we can also do marketing consultations as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Tharmila and we'll get this closed out. Yeah, so this is a uh, good time. We're gonna get into Q&A now because we did have a couple of questions that come in. So I wanna make sure that we address them. And before we get into q and I'd always like to end off with this quote and it says, the fortune favors the prepared mind. And you know, I always share this with people is because often we always wanna, in order for you to surround yourself with good people, good things in life, whether it's luck, fortune, greatness, whatever you wanna call it, in order for us to surround ourselves with that, we always have to have a prepared mind. We need to be able to uh, do the homework, the research, because we are halfway there, then you naturally attract them. And often in the process of you attracting good things in life, you need to have an open mind and you need to be able to accept. And I know change is really hard for people. And often a lot of the time when I talk to agents about, hey, what are you struggling with? Everything that they talk about is emotions, it's never logic. So often think about yourself from a perspective of, why do I feel this way? And how could I prepare my mind to attract good things in life? And often people say, oh my goodness, you're so good at this. And I say, no, I'm not lucky. I work myself. I worked myself to attract all these good things in my life. And I, and that's just the, one of the biggest advice I can give you. And so with that, let's go into Q&A. Uh, one of the questions that came in, uh, Jacob, was around what if I were to get uh, leads, like, how do I get leads to call uh, using um, for cold calling? So where do the leads coming from or like the phone list and what kind of dialer to use? And I'll start with this because I know in Toronto, in Canada is a little bit differently than US. So Jacob can chime in a little bit. And I'm just going to go off with my own personal experience of my husband cold calling. We use the Mojo dialer. It is integrated with KV Core. That's the reason why we use it. It's about $99 uh, a month US we pay for and um, and that's it we don't pay for the, the the listing because we use telelisting which is literally the phone book and it has the do not call list integrated and at, the, at our brokerage we get telelisting for free all the phone numbers of who to call and who we're not allowed to call and do not call list is integrated so we when you join our company you literally go next next and do a, like a 10 minute video on uh, what you're allowed and are not allowed to do and then they give you telelisting available and then you integrate that to mojo dialer and then we right now using a single dialer I know my husband at, at first he started with a triple dialer to do a trial and he told me like it's not worth it it's just just it, it wasn't really helpful it wasn't really making a difference. So we just stuck with the single dialer and that's what he uses. Um, so to give you an analytics, let's say, I, I don't know if you're following me on social media last Friday, I think he did three hours of calling and he did uh, out of the three hours he spoke, he called 306 or something calls and had 52 contacts. So that's what it is. And for us, it's a little bit harder for conversion because it's just literally a phone book, right? Of numbers. So these aren't FISBOs or expired people who've already thinking about real estate. So it's a little bit different, but that's that's my take. But Jacob, do you want to chime in to answer this question? Yeah, so stateside, you want to use either Mojo Dialer or RedX. Um, and with those, each one has their own sort of leads. Um, so um, each one will have like some kind of package deal. So with us, we can call specific types of people. We don't just have to call the phone books. So here you can call uh, FISBO, so for sale by owners, you can call for lease by owners, you can call expired listings and 
anybody in a geolocation. And a lot of those depending, so like, like she said, the Mojo dialer is like $99 a month. And for your triple line, it's like 149. And then depending on what you want to call, I think one, one package was like $50 a month for those leads. And so it automatically imports them into your dialer. So that would be um, easy way to get started. I, I, cause we're looking to get into with probably the Mojo dialer. So um, I noticed like to call all three of those, the FISBOs, the expired and the geo listings, it was like 333 a month for everything. So um, just definitely look into it. I mean, you could still dial by hand. You can go through the MLS and uh, find expired listings. You just want to make sure that whatever you're doing on state side, you're running things through a do not call list. Um, and you have to look at the MLS and say whether it says you're allowed to contact them or not. Um, so just you know, follow your local regulations, but that's where you would get those leads from. And uh, you can use any dialer. I know some people that like Mojo dialer, but they like the Red X leads. So you can integrate those as well. You just got to find what works for you and try it out. Um, and you can even get an ISA that will actually do the calls for you. There's tons of companies out there. Um, maybe you don't have the time or it's just not in your wheelhouse, but you know, it's important. Um, so you can uh, pay those people that are professionals on the phone and see how that works. There's all kinds of price pointing on uh, where they're at to their professional level. So it is definitely something worth trying. Um, either way, it's about getting leads in your pipeline and making sure that you nurture those leads. Because at the end of the day, no matter if you do YouTube, any of this stuff, you still have to have a conversation and we have to get used to talking to people, whether it's on the phone or in person. So, um, and if you're going to do the dialer type stuff just make sure everything we keep saying consistent consistent and give yourself a minimum 30 days or minimum 60 days depending on the avenue just to see because this whole entire business social media no matter what business you're in it's all a numbers game it's really all it is people say you're lucky like she said but if you outwork everybody and you're consistently doing something uh there's that quote and a, a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and then you're go, it's going to happen. So just do the numbers, focus on that and take the emotion out of it. Yeah. And make sure you have a strategy when you come to cold calling, like my husband, he switched different, different uh, scripts throughout the time. And that's something that we work with our agents is to kind of give them on, we do role playing and stuff. So get in the habit of doing a lot of role plays with some of the agents in your group. Like um, I think that's one of the big caveat to all of this is like getting the list is one thing all the technology the the the, the technical stuff is one thing now it's the approach and so my husband oh my goodness I walk into a room and he'll be on the phone call for 45 minutes one talking to one person but you see that's working right how could some random stranger who never even thought about you know selling or buying their property now spent like over half an hour talking to my husband and having a really in-depth questions about talking about their kids and the area and and that's kind of what you want because now when he calls them you know he tells them hey I'm gonna call you in in a, in a month and a half and I'm gonna check in on you and they're like yeah yeah of course Josh call me back and then and then you you have that conversation again and you keep that that relationship going so next time someone knocks on their door or they receive a mail they'll still think about us because we're we're their preferred agent and we keep that relationship going um so the next question we had coming in jacob was someone asked what happens if i don't have a listing how do i what kind of facebook ads do you suggest me running so as i kind of like alluded to earlier so if you don't have an, a listing there's plenty of other stuff in the area like listings and, and homes that are pub for public view. So if you're going to do a specific listing, make sure you get with that uh, person and make sure your brokerage allows you to do listings, like to showcase another person's a listing outside of your brokerage. Um, and you have that agent's um, permission in writing. But if I were you, if you have a CRM or a way to filter search results, um, to a landing page or whether it's a Facebook lead generation to get access to that list. Um, like for me, like I said, in KV Core, um, on my ID, I did a filtered search, whether it was for homes under 350 and Sugarland, which is a great deal. Um, and there's quite a few or showcase all the open houses in the area. Like one weekend I did it, there was 43 in that one little area. So uh, people will click on that. Just make sure that uh, whether you do getting access to a certain list, um, whether it's open house or, or houses for sale, that you're getting their data somehow before. So either your lead, your smart CRM is capturing that before they can look at photos or that they 
that it's getting like a lead generation form or some type of landing page or Facebook already has that built in for you. So go ahead and use their lead generation form and, and have Facebook automatically import that content and then make sure you've gotten it going into your CRM or an Excel. But that's where I would start with is maybe homes under a certain price point in your area that's a good deal that people are looking for. And uh, the open houses, maybe if you're going after investors, um, houses under a certain price point that are good flippers, you know? So there's several things you can do, especially with the filtered search result. And that's what I would focus on. Awesome. Thanks, Jacob. And we only, and we have one more question. If you have any other questions, please feel free to connect with us, uh, send it via chat and we can take it here. And um, the other question we got coming in, Jacob, is uh, what social media platform uh, to get on as a new agent? Okay. Um, I, I, that's a tricky question. If you would ask, if I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Do you mean like which to choose? Then um, if I were to choose one, I would say just go on again, like Jacob touched on it. If you have to choose, I would always recommend YouTube. But my suggestion is this folks, get a, a long form uh, content where you can put long form content and short form content. So what that means is you put out a YouTube video on YouTube with tons of, because it's gonna remember it's free, organically with keywords. Again, we have courses just on exactly how to get your YouTube startup up and running. We're doing a, a, a high level uh, webinar next week, Monday. So I highly suggest you tune in. YouTube, we have agents in our group that are literally, I we have an agent, if you check our, um, on Mike Schwartz, uh channel, you can see one of our agents in Austin, he's closing a deal a week. Uh, just solely off of YouTube. So if you do it correctly and put out the type of information to attract buyers and sellers, you'll do really well. So I wanted to, um, my suggestion would be to get on YouTube and then take YouTube and literally share that content into small bit sites pieces, just a little sneak peek all over your social media. And if you're following me on social media or Jacob, I highly suggest you do. I'm gonna do an example today. My uh, uh, Josh, my husband put out a video today again on investing in Ontario for buyers and sellers and investors we were targeting. Um, we're working with a couple of investors right now who came directly from our YouTube um, and some networking events we actually went to as well because they actually saw us on YouTube. We connected with them and they we saw them again at a networking event, which is awesome because it's a very small people group of people that are connected that are doing investments here. So we are working with them and it's funny. Now we're going to be putting out a video and you'll see the examples of something that I'm going to crop it into a small short form. I'm going to put it on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I literally copy paste it everywhere. And my Google post, that's another gold gem. So if you haven't watched our live webinars last two weeks, I highly suggest you go watch that. And then you would take the small piece of little sneak peek of your YouTube and you're driving people to YouTube. So you never want to put no more than a couple of one ITG, IGTV takes about 60 seconds. So nothing more than a minute. And you're driving people to that 10 minute video that we posted today with tons of nugget, literally teaching people where to invest in Ontario, how to invest, what are some strategies? Um, so we had another question come in. Someone asked, when you join our group, do you get access to everything? Yeah, so when you join our group folks. And if you join under Jacob, you have access to me, Jacob, Mike Sherrard, Connor Steinbrook. They're all part of our sponsors. They're all in our group called the Wolf Pack. So if you go under Con Mike or Connor, uh, which is great, they're amazing, but you don't have access to Jacob and I. So when you were all part of this one group of people, but we're all, um, it, because we have a revenue share organization, very similar to all the traditional brokerages, guys. People often think that, oh, the one big false misconception we hear about EXP is that people are threatened by disruptive models like Netflix and Amazon, right? People often think that this is a, a pyramid scheme or all these things, And but how is that any different than your broker at any of the traditional brokerages that that is that you do a deal, let's say 80, 20 split, 80 going to you, 20 going to the brokerage. And the funny thing is that 20 goes straight to the broker. You never see it again in our company. It goes back to the 50% of the revenue. The company gives it back to the agent of the company's revenue, not from the agent. So Jacob is in my group. He, I sponsored Jacob. Every time Jacob closed a deal, I made a little cut off of EXP's pocket, not Jacob's pocket, right, Jacob? You kept your full 80%, right? <laughs> Yes, I did. There you go. So I wanted to be really clear when what what that is. So a lot of the time people have a big misconception, but we do. I have a live call where I 
really break down the EXP's business model because it is very layered, super complex, and there's a lot of things to it. We have where we trade on the NASDAQ, we're a publicly traded company. We have a stock holding company. I literally made $3,500. I have it in my stock account from just stock awards of my agents doing their first deal. So it's huge. Um, and uh, if I'm not going to speak too much about the performance ahead, but if you looked at the past performance of a stock account, um, I don't have to tell you. You can just Google EXP World Holdings and you'll see how our stock is doing. So there's people that have become millionaires. Let's, uh, I'll tell you that just by, just by doing what they would do at any other traditional brokerage. So just at our company, you would be, that's why we're the fastest growing company in North America, 60,000 plus agents. We, uh, they projected to hit in the next five years, 400, 500,000 agents. And, and there are people in our group that has 500 agents and they're making six, six figure income. So Mike, Connor and agents in our upline, they're making six figure income, residual income, passive income without having to look at a single paperwork. So imagine the people that want to be team leaders and brokerage owners have to get a broker license, liability, paperwork cost, even looking at someone's paperwork. I never looked at Jacob's paperwork. He's put in multiple offers. I never had to look at them. I never had to look at, um, I'm never liable for anything that he does. It's between him and the broker and the company. So it's beautiful. And Jacob's in Houston. What I will be seeing you in Vegas this November, but um, I yes. have never seen Jacob in person, but we're, we're very close friends. We own a company together. So um, um, is pretty unique and it all happened because of our company and just having an open mind to a, a new way of working and we did that often actually my husband found he was watching the Graham Steffens and the Brian Casellas and the Josh Altmans and all those folks and then he came across Mike Sherrard who happened to be talking about EXP and then we were in the midst of uh, looking for a brokerage then we we joined we we often people like oh I'll join this brokerage and if it doesn't work I'll go to another one guys once and forever Think about, and of course, opportunities come and go. Think about long-term. People often think about their fears that they're having right now. They apply it to you know, where the business is gonna go five, 10 years from now. So remember, um, when you take advantage of a opportunity at its infancy, you are more likely gonna be rewarded over time, right? Imagine if you had invested into Tesla 10 years ago, right? Same concept here, but um, thank you for asking that question. If you, again, if I wasn't clear, feel free to get in touch with me. I'm happy to explain it. Thank you, all of you. If you have any, um, I don't think, do you have any questions that come through on your end, Jacob, privately? Uh, no. I'm good. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you, folks. We're going to send you a recording of this call to you in the email. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to partner with us, if you want to work with us, we'd love to have you in our group. Please uh, get in touch with us. Um, and we're going to put this also on the YouTube channel and go check out our content. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions you may have and um, happy selling. Yep. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you next week when we talk about um, starting on YouTube. So if you haven't registered, go register.